Valve's Steam Deck is capable of a lot of things, even if it has its limits. In PS4 era software, it can often reach rough parity with last gen systems, at least when targeting 720p or 800p resolutions to match its internal display. More demanding current gen efforts often need a bit of a haircut, but can prove quite playable as well, including some of the top end Unreal Engine 5 titles on the market. But the hardware ray tracing capabilities of the Steam Deck had to lay dormant for a long time, at least in SteamOS. But over the past year or so, ray tracing functionality has gradually been brought online in SteamOS, first in Vulkan and then later on with DXR enabled titles running under Proton, and performance has seen big boosts as well. So today we'll be taking a look at titles that use hardware ray tracing on the deck, with an eye towards achieving playable performance in some of the key RT titles. So can we get good frame rates even with demanding ray tracing settings? And how does the more powerful ROG Ally handheld compare? <laughs> The most obvious place to start with the Steam Deck is with some of the easier ray tracing workloads we have available. And I think Doom Eternal is a good first choice. Here I'm running the game at 720p with medium settings, with ray tracing toggled on. Relative to the non-RT version of the game, we get solid, if somewhat low res and slightly ghosty, reflections on glossy surfaces, with very different material properties when RT is enabled. It makes for a pretty transformative difference in scenes with very glossy materials. Although Doom Eternal with medium RT reflections has a pretty aggressive roughness cutoff, so semi-gloss materials are mostly bereft of RT treatment. Performance takes an understandable hit here as expected, with higher RT settings increasing the strain on the Steam Deck hardware further. But in typical play, we're firmly in playable framerate territory here. Through a quick run of the first couple levels, we see readouts between 30 and 50 FPS, with the game struggling a little more in dense indoor environments, but staying pretty reasonable for the most part. Sub 30 FPS performance is a possibility here and there, but with a 30 FPS framerate cap, it would mostly be smooth sailing. That's a pretty interesting outcome because Doom Eternal doesn't even feature ray tracing on the weakest current gen console, the Xbox Series S. Perhaps RAM limitations might have gotten in the way. Keep in mind that the Steam Deck has 60% more RAM than the somewhat memory starved Series S, or perhaps the image quality hit was considered too impactful for the console. In any case, the Steam Deck is putting in a good result here and scoring a feature level win over a theoretically more powerful home console system. Next up is Crisis 2 Remastered. This 2021 remaster of the 2011 classic features RT reflections on glossy surfaces. We're again using medium settings at 720p resolution here, with progressive increases in ray tracing fidelity translating to higher resolution reflections traced against a more comprehensive BVH. The performance setting gives low resolution reflections relative to the high res cube maps that are otherwise used, albeit much more accurate compared to the environment, but it fits within our frame rate targets. When non-RT FPS is hovering in the upper 50s, enabling performance RT brings us into the mid 40s or so, which is a fair enough trade-off. In typical play, we're usually between 40 and 50 FPS, with a frame rate readout that only rarely hits the 30s. It's a very playable and actually surprisingly performant experience on Steam Deck hardware, and it doesn't throw up any particular issues with larger firefights or in other taxing moments. And this is another game where Series S just doesn't show up to the ray tracing party at all, as all console versions of the game lack RT entirely. Control is our next title, a landmark early ray tracing benchmark. We're mostly pegged to the low settings preset here with medium ray tracing enabled. Control is running at just 540p internally, but gets temporally upscaled to 720p by Remedy's proprietary TAAU technique, which does produce pretty good results here. Because Control so heavily uses reflective surfaces, the visual improvement is quite profound. We're going from a mix of SDF and SSR based reflections to the full RT treatment across opaque and transparent glossy surfaces, which looks fantastic even some five years after its initial release. Not to harp on this too much, but this is yet another game where Series S is raster only, with the same awkward raster compromises that we don't have to deal with on Steam Deck here. Performance starts off pretty strong. 
were typically between 30 and 40 FPS in the early game, with one sequence even largely hitting 60 FPS. But as we get deeper into the game, some of the more complex environments aren't quite as cooperative, dropping to the 20s for extended periods. It was mostly a good experience on the deck during my play, but these moments did detract quite a bit from the experience. We see a similar performance pattern in Persona 3 Reload. This recent release makes significant use of RT reflections, and the Steam Deck mostly acquits itself quite well, with performance often at or near 60 FPS, but it struggles mightily when subjected to some of the game's heavier ray tracing workloads in city areas, with severe performance dips. Cyberpunk 2077 sees some of the same harsh performance issues, with low settings in FSR 2 in performance mode at 720p output, we're cruising along at 50 to 60 FPS while walking through the open world, but dial in RT reflections, and the frame rate plummets to the mid-teens. It runs, but it's not especially playable. Surprisingly, the full path tracing experience technically actually runs on the Steam Deck, though frame rates are in slideshow territory at just 2 to 3 FPS. It's a fascinating and oddly compelling little demo, but we're nowhere near acceptable performance here. Rounding out the SteamOS games today, we have Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, where I've targeted low settings with medium ray tracing turned on, which enables RTGI. The key concession here is resolution, which I've pegged to just 960 by 600 to boost frame rates as much as possible. With those options though, we are north of 30 FPS through the early game, with occasional excursions below 30. I imagine some of the late game sections, like the demanding Taiga level, could produce deeper lows, but otherwise we seem to be in roughly playable territory here. Unfortunately, there is an issue with this game on SteamOS at the moment, where the game seems oddly faded which I couldn't correct. That's the Steam Deck accounted for, but what about its more powerful portable counterpart, the ROG Ally? This Windows-based handheld packs a larger CPU and GPU configuration alongside high wattage TDP modes to hopefully enable better ray tracing gameplay. Let's start with Crisis 2 Remastered. In the 15 watt mode in this shot, we get the typical mild uplift over the Steam Deck, with a 24% uplift in performance. And if I dial the system up to its full 30 watt power draw, we get a 50% performance increase, which is about par for the course for the ally. But if we get a face full of ray tracing, the Steam Deck falls a lot further behind, with the Ally 38% faster here in its performance mode. I do have the Ally plugged in for these tests, which can increase the performance of the device relative to battery operation in some instances. In Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, we're getting about 31 FPS in the Ally, while the Steam Deck brings up the rear with about 26 FPS. But again, different scenes produce different results, with the Ally roughly 70% faster here, and a whopping 140% faster when we step up to 30 watts of TDP on the APU. We do tend to see a lot of variance in the ROG Ally here relative to Steam Deck, so I was curious, would shifting the deck over to Windows help explain some of the discrepancies? I came away from Windows testing more confused than anything else. In SteamOS, we can hit frame rates in the 30s with Crisis 2 Remastered, with RT set to high, and in the 10s to teens with RT reflections on in Cyberpunk. Not a great outcome, but basically as expected from the testing so far. I'm using the deck LCD for these tests, because the deck OLED drivers for Windows aren't really in a usable state at the moment. If we switch to Windows, performance in Crisis 2 actually gets a big haircut, with much worse performance than SteamOS but Cyberpunk does get a pretty substantial frame rate boost, so it does seem like there's a lot of per game variance. I conducted these tests with the VRAM allocation in Windows, bumped to four gigabytes to maximize performance. Switching back to the Ally though, you can run ray tracing games with decent performance, especially if you tune the system to hit turbo frequencies. I managed to squeeze a pretty solid 60 FPS out of Persona 3 Reload for instance, with max settings at 720p. The Polonia Mall was a significant exception, but considering how poorly this area runs on Steam Deck, I still think the ROG Ally is doing a decent job here. I got good results in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition 2, with medium settings at 720p. We're often falling between 40 and 50 FPS here, 
which is a great result I think considering how visually advanced this game is. This is a level of performance that is massively in excess of what the Steam Deck can deliver. Finally, I decided to give two of the most graphically ambitious PC titles a shot, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and Alan Wake 2. Both of these games feature ray tracing prominently, and both look their best on a much more powerful PC, not on a low wattage PC handheld. Alan Wake 2 is set to the low quality preset with low ray tracing at 720p with FSR 2 in performance mode doesn't deliver a very good result at all. Initially, the game seems to struggle with resolving a proper FSR 2 image for some reason, with a highly pixelated and noisy on-screen result. Eventually, the game does settle down a bit, but we're in 20 FPS territory here in the town area, which is generally speaking one of the less intense areas of the game. We do get RT shadows and RT reflections in the mix, but the boundary pushing visuals aren't matched with solid performance. I am using the Allies Turbo mode here as well, but that's just not enough it seems. Avatar fares a good deal better. Again, we're using the low settings preset, but here I've elected to target 720p with TAA as the game won't go below 720p internally with any reconstruction option. On the surface, the results don't look bad. We're clocking in at about 30 FPS, or even a bit above in this area, and the game looks excellent despite an obvious decrease to environmental detail. The problem is the average frame rate is let down by fairly frequent stutters, showing open world traversal on my ally here, which prove pretty annoying and do disrupt the flow of gameplay. Longer sub 30 FPS excursions are also a possibility, though it's really those stutters that prove more pervasive. Avatar's RTGI and RT reflections are tantalizing, but truly stable performance eludes us here. I did try bumping up the VRAM allocation from 4GB to 6GB and 8GB to see if that would fix things, and I still saw similar performance drops during my gameplay. The Steam Deck is indeed capable of running games with ray tracing enabled in SteamOS, and manages to hit decent performance figures in games with relatively light ray tracing workloads. Titles like Doom Eternal, Crisis 2 Remastered, and Persona 3 Reload can be in good shape on the deck. Even Metro Exodus scores a playable result. Other titles can cause the device to really suffer, however, with its small GPU with limited RT acceleration struggling. Some games are perfectly playable and even performant, while other games, not necessarily always the ones you'd expect, prove very challenging. The ROG Ally does run faster than the deck. On games that can target both devices, the Ally can achieve a pretty huge performance increase, provided you stick to its higher end power modes. When you do get that increase in power, the device is capable of some pretty impressive feats. Still, there are limits, with Alan Wake 2 and Avatar not delivering a great experience when ray tracing is enabled. In the interest of portable battery life and of performance more generally, I'd probably stay away from these RT titles across the range of gaming portables. Current gen consoles aren't exactly known for their ray tracing prowess, but all of them, even the Series S, are much more capable than the devices we have here. And those consoles benefit from tweaking and optimizing that doesn't always translate to lower end PC hardware. The current crop of gaming handhelds are really calibrated towards 8th gen console games and titles targeting similar or weaker specs, and not for the hardest hitting showcases of current gen technology. Titles that use ray tracing capabilities are a bit hit or miss here, and users may want to optimize for higher performing, battery sparing experiences instead. But for those who do want to experience a touch of boundary pushing tech on portable hardware, you can indeed run ray tracing experiences on handheld devices. Just don't go in with very high expectations. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch use social media. Thanks for watching.